What's up? Jim here. Welcome back to J Street Moto. Welcome to the channel if this is your first time. Do me a favor, like, subscribe, click the notification bell, share it with your friends. It's free for you to do and it helps my channel. Ever since getting this bike five weeks ago, I've been spending a lot of time thinking about, you know, kind of what would I change about it? What, what don't I like? What, what things do I need to do to it to make the bike more mine? It's a good way to put it, customize it. And if you own a motorcycle, you know, especially if you own a Harley, everybody does their own things to them. They customize them, they can customize the hell out of them. I'm curious, drop it down in the comments, are you the kind of person that when you buy a bike, you're immediately doing everything you can do at it. You're throwing the kitchen sink at it the second you buy it and take it off the showroom floor. Or are you the kind of person that spends time on the motorcycle trying to let it tell you what it really needs? I'm definitely the latter. And I'm probably the latter almost to a fault. So as I think about the 2024 Road Glide, here are my, here are my impressions after riding it for 800 miles. It's a good way to put it. And what things I know have to be changed. They're, they're non-negotiables. First one. And this one's really kind of my only gripe with the 24 Road Glide. The stock stereo on this bike sucks. It does. It is not loud. You cannot hear it above 40 miles an hour. And, I mean, that's just, it's insane to me. I mean, I, the, the, the Curioc and Road Thunder X or Road Thunder Max that I had on my Road King Special is louder than the stereo by about, I'd have to say, 60 to 70 percent. Because I could at least hear that one running down the road at 80, you know, with just a little teeny windshield on front. So yeah, problem with it is though, bikes are so new, no one's really got a solution for the stereo yet. At least one that increases, you know, increases the performance of the stereo. No one's really got a solution for it yet. I've been talking with Tim Henry over at Tim Stereo Solutions. He's the guy that, if you've watched the video, he's the guy that sold me the uh, solution that lets me fake out my car play on the bike been talking to him or keeping in touch with him because they've got something they are just now going through testing with and then they're going to start you know kind of ramping it up to mass produce it so i think a solution is going to be coming out soon so that's the first thing i need to change on the motorcycle the second thing i need to change is the windshield uh it's just a little too short um when i'm riding whether i'm in a full or a half Wind is hitting me right here, almost right between my eyes, and I want it to go up and over my head. I will want to replace the windshield before I do anything on the stereo, because there's a possibility that maybe the reason I can't hear the stereo above 40 is because the wind noise is overcoming it. I don't know. The windshields are going to be available probably before the stereo equipment is, so I'll most likely be swapping the windshield out first. I'm looking at going with clockworks. Uh, and the ones they make for the 23 CVOs fit the 24 Road Glides. So they already have windshields in stock. Uh, I was trying to figure out exactly what height I need. I was over there at, we were over at Rick Rack yesterday, hanging out with those guys, and uh, I sat on, sat on the bike they're using kind of like their prototype or testing bike where they put all their parts and stuff and the one that they mess around with was sitting on that road by which is a 24 as well with the windshield they had on it from clockworks and i think that one is the right size um it's i want to say it was a 12 or 13 so i might be able to go ahead and get the windshield now it's a possibility so yeah the windshield and the stereo as for, let's talk about the other stuff from a rider's comfort perspective. As for the stuff associated with the rider triangle, so handlebars, seats, uh, foot position, floorboards, foot controls, that kind of thing. This bike is actually extremely comfortable to ride, and I'm, I'm, 
I almost don't think I'm going to need to change the handlebars because my hands are in a pretty good position. I've, I've ridden it a lot, and I've, more importantly, I've ridden it for an extended period of time at one shot. And it, uh, I never had any discomfort in my arms, neck, shoulder, back. So I think my hands are in a really good position. The seat, honestly, the stock seat for the rider, at least. I don't need a new one yet. I don't. I don't need something different. What's going to make my decision on the seat is the wife. Uh, she needs to ride this one a few more times to tell me whether or not the she needs a different passenger. Pillion is the way to put it. And in all honesty, what I really need to do, what I like to do when I get a bike, is I like to ride it for a while in all of the ways that I'm going to ride it, like I would do on a long distance trip. I haven't had a chance to do that yet, not with this motorcycle, so um, I want to do that. I want to do at least one of those good long rides with the setup the way it is to, because that will really tell me whether I need to change the bars, the seat, floorboards, foot controls. So far, floorboards and foot controls are pretty comfortable for me. For those of you that are interested, or, or you know, if, if you're curious, I'm six foot tall and I have a 31 inch inseam. So my legs are shorter than most people's are for being as tall as I am. So what is comfortable for me when I'm sitting on a motorcycle might be different than what's comfortable for you. The stock setup might not be your jam. People are starting to get seats out for it. I know I saw uh, John over at Cycle Fanatics got his saddle, got a saddle in it, got two of them, got a road sofa in and got the uh, step up, the tuck and roll step up from Saddleman that fit the 24. So some people are starting to, you know, get some stuff coming out, which is good. The other thing I'm thinking about though is from a performance perspective, what would I change? You know, and, and I'll be honest, this bike is extremely, for being stock, these bikes come out of the showroom pretty freaking angry is the way I would put it. I mean, if you put it in sport mode, or better yet, create your own custom mode, which is what I'm riding in right now, you can really make these bikes run without any other work. <laughs> Look at that. What's that, dude? So I'm still kicking around in my head like what I want to change on it. There's a big part of me that wants to put a cam in it. Uh, you know, new lifters, tappets, basically do a stage two. Big part of me wants to do that. What I've been delaying with so far, because people have cams out there for these bikes. That's that's not the issue. Uh, the issue is the only tuner that's available is Harley's. And I'm a little skeptical because I'm not, I'm not that guy that really likes the Screaming Eagle product line. We met uh, talking to Shane and Alex over at Rick Rack, and sure as shit, they told me that they've done a stage two on. They put a full two into two exhaust on it from Sony. They've got a cam in it that's a Harley cam, it's a torque cam. And they have a, uh, and they have, well, you know, they did everything you have to change when you change the cam. And they put the Screaming Eagle tuner on it. Well, according to them, according to Shane at least, he's pretty impressed with the uh, Screaming Eagle tuner. I mean, he gave it a glowing enough recommendation. I might consider not waiting until my bike is out of warranty to get a tuner. I might go with the Harley product. It is one that you can configure or tune, change the tune in via Bluetooth from your phone. Um, I need to see what kind of functionality it has though. And then I need to at least figure out what I think, um, what kind of functionality is gonna be there in the aftermarket stuff. One of the big reasons I wanna get a tuner is not just to, you know, mess with the performance of the bike, because it does that. I want to have control over certain settings like top speed, rev limit. Um, I don't like I don't like someone else dictating to me what I can and can't do. So, I, I, and I'm pretty certain because they have to stick with EPA emission, you know, 
restrictions and all that stuff at Arlie. I'm pretty sure the Screaming Eagle tuner does not allow you to do that. I need to run out to Speedway and talk to some folks and find out, you know, what does it, what does it let you change? See, I am thinking about doing that. If I do it, you guys will know about it. Um, from a cam perspective, when I get to that point that I'm going to do that job, I am not going to be doing that myself. At least not alone. Uh, I've never done that. Watched a ton of videos on it. I am not a, if you've been on the channel for any length of time, you know I'm not a mechanic. I'm a banker. So, I do, I can do some stuff mechanically on this motorcycle, but tackling a job like that on a brand new bike, brand new motor, and for warranty purposes, I'm gonna have a Harley mechanic do it. But anyway, that's what I wanted to talk about. I figured I'd ask you guys, comment if you feel comfortable. Tell me, which one are you? Are you the kind that is immediately wanting to change stuff as soon as you get your motorcycle? Or are you the kind of person that's like, you know, really, I think I want to spend some time with her and figure out when I need to change. Be interested in knowing. Suspension. Oh, suspension. As of now, the stock suspension on this girl is way better than the suspension that was on the Road King. So for now at least, I'm not feeling like I need to change the suspension. That might be something that I change my mind about after I've done a couple of those long rides like I said I want to do. Anyway, close it out here. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, click that notification bell, share it with your friends. Always ride safe. Yeah, ready? One, two, three, shoot. Ah. Asshole. Really? <laughs> Peace out, bitches! <laughs>